Okay, so now I've embedded my Visio document using the Visio Visual into Power BI. And to prove that it's got some automatic mapping going on, I chose the cabinet name. And under that, we can see that every single one of those records there, those rows, has been linked automatically to a shape over there. Of course, if I didn't have that, I'd have to go and drag and drop out a row. Unfortunately, I prepared my Visio document well, and I've got this automatic linking going on. So the next thing I probably want to do here is to put some text on those shapes so we can recognize what they are. So again, I'm going to take the, the cabinet name, I'm going to drop it into the values there, and we can see now that Visio is displaying those, or the Visio Visual is displaying those, and if I zoom in, you can see it is not particularly pretty. I was just going to focus on that so we can now go in and we can say, well, where do we want it to show? We want it to show in the center, middle. And do we want a label? No, we don't need to have a label shown there. So now we can see that we have got that being displayed within there, text displayed, etc. And I can change the font color if I want to. So now we can see that we've got uh, that on there. In fact, I can switch on the border, which gives this nice underline if I want to. I can go and change the font size if I want to. And now we can see that it's been nicely displayed on there. The next thing I want to do actually is to color these cabinets by the network side they're on. I want to see which ones are on the wild side, which ones are internal, etc. What we have within the data at the moment is this thing called the cabinet network side here. So if I was to drag this and put it into the values, then, oh, look, I've got some text there. Let's just have a quick look at what we've got in there. I don't want to see the label. Well, it's not going to exactly give me color because I don't really have a way of uh, putting in a range of numbers for those colors there. So I need to have something better. So this is where I need to go into Power Query to convert the text values into numeric values. So I'll go into my edit query here. And if I scroll to the right a bit here, we'll be able to see what all those uh, network, cabinet network side values are. Over here, you can see we've got a variety of things. And here under cabinet network side, we can see these are the values that we have at the moment. So I'm going to have something which is amber, green, and then red, and not applicable. Well, I'll probably do that as blue. So how am I going to do that? Well, the best thing to do here is to add a column. And I'm going to add in a custom column into it. And I'm going to call this the uh, network side index. And there I need to oh, I can get rid of that little bit just there. Put in a formula. This is now using what's called uh, M functions. And you can go and learn about this by pressing on those. But I can just paste in the one that I've got in here and then read it out to you. So basically I'm creating a uh, list from those values that we see in there and I'm getting in the, the index position of the value that we're returning for each row within there. So we've got uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 and that's going to come from the cabinet network side field. So do OK on there. It is, and we see now the numbers one, two, zero, etc. So I've converted those text values into numbers. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change this to just cabinets. Now that it's within here, I'll call it cabinets and I'll save this. And now apply those changes. and apply the changes. There we go. So the name has been updated, even though we had a slight complaint for a moment. And we've got the cabinet network name there, which I can now remove, because that's not what I want to have as the, the color. I should have now down on here, which is the network side index. And I can change this to be color. And we can see automatically we are now getting colors displayed. So I can be a bit more precise about which color I want to be 
uh, representing what? It's already worked out there are actually four values there. So this is going to catch everything that's up to uh, three. So that's zero, one, two, three there. And I think I wanted this one to be red. Uh, go over there a bit. And I think this one was amber. Uh, just do that for now. Uh, I think this one was green. Somewhere in there. And this one I think I had as blue because it was not applicable. So now we have got uh, different colors rep representing the different network side that they're on. And I can just see the effect of that in here like that. All right, I better check that these actually work. So I'm going to go back to the report. Uh, I'm going to just change the size of this graphic here a little bit. Visio one so that I can add in above that a uh, tree map. And in the tree map, I'm going to go to that uh, original, what was it called now? The cabinet network side. Put that in there and I'm going to, need to do a count of the name. Drag that into the values. And look, now we've got the nice little chart here. And if I just stretch that out a bit, all I need to do now is go and edit the colors to match the ones that are in there. So I go to my visualizations tab and go to the format, look at the data colors. And here we can see all oh, the red internal facing one. I just choose that uh, not applicable. That was a blue. Uh, I know we'll edit the colors to be exact later, but I'm just going to put in a green for now and uh, amber. All right, like something like that. So uh, they're close, but I'd, I'd go and actually take out the uh, the hex values and, and push them in down there. So they've got an exact match. Now we've got uh, this here and we need to be able to, when we select one of these, for it to highlight down there. So how are we going to do that? So what we do is, first of all, move this a little bit so we can see what's going on and go to the format tab and on there we do edit interactions so with the selected what we want to happen on the visio visual is that it does a filter and there you go so when i select one of these it's going to go and filter and show me the values that i want or undo it like that now i want to add in a chiclet in here so i've already imported the chiclet slicer from the marketplace and uh, oh, I didn't mean to do it on that. I put that one back. I didn't just need to add it over there. If I put a chiclet down there, and this chiclet, yeah, I'm going to make it so that I have um, the network or cabinet function rather. Just select the cabinet function on there. I'll leave that for now. Now we've got the cabinet function on there, and go to the chiclets thing over here and. What is it general? I want to have just one column. And now when I select on one of these, you can see that it is filtering both of those controls over there. Isn't it great? Love it. Okay, now I want to add a bit more data graphics onto the shape. So if I zoom in and I look over what sort of data is available for me, there is one down here called the cabinet power rating, which you can see is a numeric value. Okay, and if I would and then drag the cabinet power onto there, then we see that that's been shown like this. Now, wouldn't it be a lot neater if I could show that uh, visually? So let me just uh, take the, the label off there so we can see that there is a value. But now I'm going to create myself a little bit of data graphics based on that value there. So to do that, I'm going to go into edit the query again, and this time I'm going to add a, uh, and I'm going to add in a conditional column, which is going to be based on, we call that power rating, and it's going to be based on the cabinet power rating value there. So if it's null, I'm not going to show anything. Add a rule, else if 
it is greater than, so again I get the cabinet power rating. Actually, I want to make it to is greater than or equal to say uh, 2000. And then I want to show a character there. So how do I insert myself a character? Well, Visio, like uh, any of the other Office applications, has the ability of inserting symbol characters. So if I just start inserting one there and I go and have a look in my symbols, and I really want to have a look at everything that's in the Sigo UI. So let's go down to Sigo UI, and there's some symbolic ones there. And here we can see there's a number of characters that you can choose to display, a whole range of them. The, the Visio uh, Visual only uses this particular character set, but you can see there's an awful lot in there. So all I need to do is go and select myself a character from here that I want to put in there. Let's say, for example, well, here's some recently used ones. That in fact, it's the one that I used. I just insert like that. And we see that it's going into Visio. OK, I'm just going to copy that. So I've highlighted that back into here and I just paste it and then add a rule cabinet power rating is greater than or equal to 1500 and I go and insert another character add another one so the cabinet power rating is greater than or equal to Say so 1000, oh, that's 100. I'll put in 1000 and go and put in another symbol character. Finally, I can add in another wise and put in a character. So, this way, I've now got symbols being displayed within my data record set. So, all I've got to do now is to uh, close this query, apply it. I now have power rating which I can add onto here and I can decide, I say it's going to be horizontal position, right, bottom, that sounds good to me. I don't want to show a label for this. Uh, let's have a different color for it, just to, and we have got ourselves a little bit of graphic down there, which denotes power rating they all seem to be pretty high on that one but there you go you can see that we've got a different arrow going on so we've created ourselves an icon set in effect so now what about a data bar well one of the fields there is spare which is numeric so I want to now have a display give me an idea of the size of that value again I'm going to go into edit query and I'm going to add myself another column. And I'm going to add in another custom column, which I'll call, say, spare bar. And put in a formula here on the column spare, which has got a numeric value in it. And I'm going to repeat an, another character by the number of, I've seen that spare value. When I do OK, I then get a bar like this. Of course, I could then modify that, which is what I did in my eventual one, and I had one for low, medium, high, so that I could apply different colors to it. But that's the principle.